Okay, so good evening, everyone, and thank you for joining Capens and also uh, together with Kai Association's uh, info session seminar. So um, let me quickly go through our agenda today. So first of all, we have uh, very honored to have Joanne from the Kai Association. Um, she will briefly talk about the whole destination and then uh, the market trend for the Kaya for the Kaya Association and the Kaya destination. And then the second part, we will have Clapton's trainer, Larry. Um, he will talk about the best learning solution in Clapton for you, how would be the best way for you to prepare for the exam. And then he will also uh, provide you with a quick demo lecture to let you experience our learning firsthand. And then finally, we will talk about the student support and the offer that we are providing. And last but not least, um, if you remember, there will be an answer question uh, Q&A session at the end and also a chance to win the ebook. So make sure you stay at the end so that uh, you can get a chance to win the ebook. So let me now hand over the time to Joanne and then he will talk, uh, she will talk about the whole Kaya um, destination. Hey Yvette, that's wonderful and uh, thank you very much indeed for that great introduction. I think we are all here. Um, well everyone on the phone, um, great to, to see you all here this evening. My name's Jo, Jo Murphy. Um, I'm the Managing Director and head up the chiral organization for here in the Asia Pacific. And I'm um, going to whiz down maybe over the next 15 or so minutes before I hand across to Larry a little bit on why alternative investments, oops, what our mission is and um and arguably what's actually happening in the industry as well whoops i think we're having a few little problems with our controls just one second please here we go um we'll talk about the mission and what's kind of happening in the alternative investment space and then the the, the real meat of tonight and i'm delighted to be here to to work obviously with kaplan on this too is just talking about the charter program from kaya and um, some of the study tools and what to expect if you are looking at either the level one or the level two of the program. So I think just setting the scene, you know, alternative investments, it's the big why. Why, why, why alternative investments? And I really believe that we had a, a pretty unusual 10-year bull market run where there was a lot of beta in the industry post the global financial crisis which happened back in 2008 and what you're therefore seeing I don't know what's happened with these the, the slides I'm so sorry um Yvette I'm not sure whether you're moving the slides on your side but I'll, I'll give it another go from here just once sorry um to our callers and I do apologize just one second here we go let's see if that works um, so obviously diversification is, is one of the things that alternative investments bring to the table. But I do think alternative investments also have had a pretty bad PR problem um, over the last 10 years, but something that the COVID has certainly brought to the table, as were the headwinds in some of the market returns in the most recent period of time, the last six or 12 months, is the fact that more and more people are looking for diversification and indeed um, recognize and get superior risk adjusted returns by looking at a broader array of investments in their portfolio. Now the size of the industry just keeps on growing. So as of midpoint of last year, there were over $10 trillion of assets in the, in the um, industry. And that's a threefold industry uh, growth over just the last 10 years. Um, predictions are suggesting that that could go as, as large as 15, if not greater than $15 trillion in the next three to four years. And just significant cash has been raised and pooled into these asset classes in the recent periods. Private capital has been a significant recipient of money. Um, if you look at the money that has been raised in the last three to four years, you'll see here that the percentage increase from 04 to, or 010 to 04, excuse me, was up over 50%, 55%. Then the growth in private capital between 05 and 019 was actually up 16%. So private capital really brings together private equity, real estate, infrastructure, natural resources, and private debt, and private 
debt is a sector that has seen explosive growth again post global financial crisis and that's because the banks in the most part have stopped lending and so alternative capital alternative access to investments that had to be found and that what that's why we've seen this significant growth in the private debt space in, in recent years Now I'll draw your eyes to the very bottom of this of this of this particular table, and I'm sure when Larry gives his presentation in a few minutes, we'll really learn about the benefits of diversification. I think we all know that the old proverb of putting your eggs in the same basket does not make sense. But if you take the major or the major asset types here and the major returns they've enjoyed over the one, five, and ten year, and particularly since GFC hit back in 2008, you can see the returns and the risks, the volatility that those different sectors have actually garnered. And if you look at the bottom three lines, you can see 100% of capital allocated to alternatives, the returns and the volatility you would have seen. A 60 40 um, equity versus fixed income portfolio, and then a 60 40 40, which is basically 60% of cash in alternatives to then 40% being balanced across both equities and fixed income. And as you see there, the returns have been quite spectacular, and indeed the volatility was dampened out as well when you look at more money being put into a broader a range of investments. So these types of statistics, these sorts of analysis are exactly what we, we look at when we think about volatility and, and indeed diversification and exactly why diversification really does matter. From a trends perspective we've got some significant growth um, but I think there's going to be some challenging roads for us traverse to, to uh, traverse ahead. Therefore, understanding this part of the world, the alternative investments world, is we feel very, very important. Um, as you see the headlines here, hedge fund performance is recovering, but investors are still a little bit frustrated. Money continues to be consolidated. We see cash going to the bigger players. The market continues to be bifurcated. Um, many more investors are putting capital to work in the asset classes. So if your job entails speaking to investors, they're no longer just wanting to look at traditional investments. Increasingly, they're wanting to get more familiar um, and be more comfortable investing in alternative investments. So there's a lot of actually happening in the mega trends in alternatives and getting to know the actual asset class a bit more in a bit more detail, we feel is really important. And that's really where Kaya can help. Um, here at the Kaya Association, we're a professional body that, that basically crafts and builds a professional qualification in alternative investments. We advocate all things related to a high ethical standard. And indeed, um, we enjoy over 11,000 members now around the world. Um, over some 95 different countries are our actual um, members that we have that hold our qualification. We just wrote a piece um, that we launched and published just um, shy of two weeks ago, in fact. Um, the link is at the bottom of the screen here, and I think Yvette will kindly share a copy of this report with all the participants today as well. Is our call from Kyra and what we expect to happen over the next 10 years. And what we really are calling as a call to action on the industry is we need a commitment to education. We need a professional qualification that really underlines one's competence, comprehension, and overall comfort in the alternative investments industry. We think the industry has to absolutely embrace transparency um, to provide the end investors with better visibility on what therefore happens within their portfolio. We absolutely think diversification matters and it has to be advocated from the very, very top to the very, very bottom. And then everything should be de democratized. And what we're saying there is it's not kind of fair that certain investors get access to some superior returns or products which other people don't get access to. So we think protect with knowledge, but democratize, make all different types of investments available to all different types of um, investors. Now getting into the, the Kaya curriculum itself, uh, and again, Larry will talk through this in, in his presentation, but the Kaya curriculum is broken into two parts, level one and level two. And in fact, for this coming exam cycle, which is in September of this year, 
we've actually got an entire new curriculum, which will be our fourth edition, um, which will be taught for the exams that will be sat for level one in September. And what we've done with the new edition of the curriculum is for the level one, it's all about the what of alternative investment. So it's a much deeper dive into the specific pillars of alternative investments. So we look at an introduction to alternative investments. We look at hedge funds and managed futures, commodities and real assets, structured products, then private equity, private debt and venture capital. The main investment types of products that sit and, and overall investments which sit uh, are the actual sector we address within the level one curriculum. And then from a testing perspective, just moving down one page, sorry, one second. Ah. Ah. We seem to be having some problems with our slides. I do apologize. Here we go. And um, as we saw previous page there, the, the topics or the areas which we look at from a, um, a teaching perspective, and then for the examination, these are the topics and how the question itself is taught within the actual examination. So there's six different sectors or levels within level uh, one of the, of the curriculum, and they're the exam weights that we actually apply. Um, level one is all multiple choice, um, all two to our papers, 100 questions across two hours. Then after level one comes level two. And for this September, we will be teaching and testing from the third edition. I believe there are some um, professionals on the call this evening who will be level two candidates in September. So for the level two candidates for September 2020, the curriculum will still be the third edition. And these are the topics of what we will be addressing and teaching in the curriculum. And indeed, it's much more about the allocator perspective. How do you go about making investments? How do you look at manager due diligence? How do you look at um, risk and risk management within the actual perspective of what we're teaching um, within the level two curriculum? Again, here you'll see the breakdown of the topics which we are um, looking at within the examination itself. A little bit different for the level two candidates that might be here this evening. Um, half of the exam is multiple choice and then half of the exam is constructed or essay responses as three questions we teach and test upon in the level two examination. Now, um, I believe there are a couple of CFA charter holders here on the call this evening. Um, the good news for CFA members, if you are a CFA member, is we um, launched a stacking initiative um, just over two years ago. And that means if you have no prior KIA exam history and you are a CFA member in good standing, you're eligible to leave level one and move straight to level two. So that's something to bear in mind if you are a CFA member and you wish to take advantage of that stacking pilot program, you may progress straight to level two rather than having to sit both the level one and the level two examination. Now there's an awful lot of material on the Kaya website um, by all things relating to our study guides and our workbooks and indeed these types of candidate orientation webinars we host as well. But equally, there's a lot of material available for third party preparatory courses as well. And as we have this partnership here with Kaplan this evening, we absolutely know candidates who work with a prep provider, in addition to looking at the Kaya materials and study guides, stand a much better chance of passing um, than, than personal study. And from our own analysis of our candidates around the world, we know at least half of them decide they can't go it alone. They do need some help and find the third party preparatory course assistance invaluable. And again, I'm sure both Larry and Yvette will talk a little bit more about that in a moment. Um, additionally, from Kaya's perspective, we do provide a sample exam. Um, and once you are a candidate, you'll get access to that online. But if you haven't visited the sector under preparing on the Kaya website, I really do encourage you to do so. There's some great stuff there um, and some additional resources which would help you as well. We always get asked the question on pass rates. And um, as you can see here, the pass rate uh, breadth between level one and level two is um, getting wider. 
So in the September of 2019 examinations, 52% um, was the pass rate and in the level two, 69% was the pass rate for exams. We're just putting out the March 2020 level two exam grades in the next few days. As I'm sure you guys can appreciate, it's been an interesting time the last few months, um, but I'll happily share that again to Yvette to pass around to you um, over the coming days as well. From a cost perspective, um, there are program enrollment fees and then there are exam fees. And we are in the early bird window at the moment. Um, and so there is an early bird eligibility to register early. And then indeed, um, those numbers are there in addition to your textbooks and to um, other fees that, that are outlined. Now, I do encourage you to speak to your HR or your line manager if you're working for, a, for an organization. Many companies will reimburse you um, and support you on your learning journey. Uh, and equally, if you'd like to contact me directly and I can speak or help speak to your HR colleagues or your line managers about the program and why it should be benefited and something you, you might get reimbursed, I'm very happy to do that. We do a lot of that engagement with HR and product teams um, from Kaya. So if I can help at all there, let me know. Some dates for your diary. As I say, the early bird registration does close today, and um, which is the last day to enjoy that additional $100 off of the exam fee. Um, but regular registration will be open until August the 5th. And then for candidates that will sit their level one, the exam window is between the August the 31st and September the 11th. And then the level two candidates will sit their exams between September the 14th and September the 25th of 2020. Just a few thoughts on what our members have found most beneficial. We really find our members tell us that having the mark after their name on their business card or on their LinkedIn profile or on their CV is a differentiator. It's uh, increasingly showcasing that, that they are proficient and familiar with all things alternative investments. We have a really active chapter, which is where um, our members get together in different markets. For us here in Hong Kong, um, our chapter executives host regular education and regular networking events. So if you're wanting to get more involved and, and, and speak to people that work in the industry, once you're a candidate, you're able to come along to those events and, and participate. And I would really encourage you to, to get involved with that. We have our own journal, the Journal of Alternative Investments that comes out each quarterly. That keeps you all current once you become a member on what's going on. And there's an awful lot of curated content from Kaya's side from our All About Alpha blog or our newsletters or our chronicles. There's an awful lot of materials we produce and populate and then share that keeps our professionals and our members up to speed in what's happening within the industry. And then finally, we have a career center. Um, increasingly employers recognize that professionals that are applying for jobs with Kaya are bringing different skills to the table and so you're increasingly seeing job applications with the words working towards already obtained or, or interested in taking the Kaya examination as being something that employer is looking for. One more thought, I mentioned our um, study uh, a few slides back on something we published a, a couple of weeks back. I will get a copy of that shared with each of you. But equally, I'd encourage you to have a look at the Kaya webcast um, link on our website as well. Um, with things no longer being in the physical space around the world due to COVID, we've moved a lot of our events and educational sessions to virtual events online. Um, would really encourage you to sign up and listen into those educational sessions. We had a, a session on e-gaming and how to invest in that wonderful um, sector that's, that's growing um, extraordinarily largely in recent months, just last week. Um, we've got a session coming up on valuations. We've got a session coming up on ESG. There's some things happening around all things on alternative, uh, alternative data. But I would really encourage you to have a look at some of those webcasts. You can listen in live or you listen to, to a, a recording as well. Um, but some great stuff on the Kaya website and I encourage you all to have a look and get a bit more familiar with the things that are actually happening. So I think I'll pause there and um, pass the baton across to Larry um, who's going to talk to you now. I'll give up control here um, if I may and um, Larry may I pass across to you please and you should have control of the 
of the slides now. Okay, yes, thank you, Joe. Oh, uh, let me just check uh, if it works at my end. Ah, yes, lovely. Okay, thank you, Joe. It was a lovely introduction of Kaya and also their latest development of the industry. And uh, probably I will use around 10 to 15 minutes uh, to look at these industries, the alternative investments and also the examinations from the candidate's point of view, okay? And also how Clapton, uh, how do we have these uh, courses helping the, the candidates um, to go through all these uh, examinations. Uh, here is a little bit of introduction of myself. Um, I started off in the, um, in the buy side asset management, uh, doing portfolio management, traditional asset classes. And then later on, I move on and uh, do some product specialist jobs um, covering both traditional investments and alternative investments. So it was a great uh, opportunity for me to um, have more coverage of uh, both hedge funds and private equities. But of course, nowadays with this uh, evolution of the industries, you see more and more different types of AI. And, uh, and uh, you will see um, uh, that is why this uh, curriculum has been uh, revised. Okay, um, as Joe mentioned that um, the, the size of the alternative investments have grown quite a lot. Uh, uh, well, currently it's more than um, <clears throat> 10 trillions. Um, probably it is a result of the increasing demand for that type of investments. So it could be from companies, could be from the retail with their new retail products and, um, and also new demand from the financial institutions like the pension fund insurance company and also from the governments. And each of these types of investors, they do have different needs. Yeah. But AI is not just a, a big general as a classes. Within AI, we also have different types of investments like um, hedge funds, real assets, okay, can I use it? Yes. Private debt and private equities and also some structured products for different types of uh, investment objectives. We, when we conduct our classes, we have also a um, very diverse um, background of our students. Um, if you look at this different kind of demand for AI, um, people from the let's say financial institutions, uh, example, like an insurance company. Uh, people working in the insurance company, if they are responsible for that type of um, investments, AI, probably they need to get the qualifications. And uh, we do have students coming from th that kind of um, institutional investors. And similarly, other companies or even family office, family office are also diversifying their portfolio and um, uh, increasing their allocations. For example, real estate, yeah, I think it is a quite a popular choice in Hong Kong, um, not just in Hong Kong, probably in Asia Pacific. So we have students from family office that uh, they are also pursuing these uh, higher qualifications uh, for themselves and also for their job purpose. And in addition to all these investors, of course, there are various types of um, uh, students from the fund managers or also students from the intermediaries. Uh, there could be some students from private banking, for example, they are the inter intermediaries helping their clients to uh, select and invest in the AI. And we also have very um, experienced students as well. And uh, in the last diet, I had students, he, he has been working in the sales side and just recently switching to the buy side and uh, or actually he knew quite a lot already in the investment markets but still kaya is a good qualification for him to pursue so you see it, it is very um uh, well recognized the qualification and uh, our students coming from various backgrounds and uh, doing this exam um just to echo what just uh, uh, what Joe just uh, mentioned earlier on with the increasing size of the investments in the AI, uh, 4.8 trillion in 2004, um, well, increased by around two times to 2018 uh, to 13.4 trillion, and it is expected to grow even further. Um, if I look at these figures, um, 
Yes, I, I think so. Uh, the direction is probably correct. Yeah, with this uh, institutional investors increasing their allocation to the portfolio uh, for various types of reasons uh, that we can go through later. Yeah, but whether you can go up to 18 to 24 percent of the total investment universe, well, I think it is still um, subject to the market conditions in the coming years. And if we look at the breakdown of the investment in the AI, um, in the past, hedge funds, private equities, these two are the, well, I would say it's the mainstream investments within the AI area. But of course, nowadays they are, they still are. Okay, you see out of this 13 trillions, 4 trillion into the private equities and 4 trillions into the hedge funds. But if we look at the growth of these uh, different segments, I would say uh, hedge funds has lagged behind a little bit in the past few years. And what has uh, taken up the share is the private equities, in particular, um, private debt as well. So these two, private equity and private debt, uh, I think they have uh, uh, quite um, spectacular growth rate in the past few years. But it's not to say that there's no growth in the hedge funds. In the hedge funds, there has been some evolution as well. It is the liquid form of the hedge funds. And that is also part of the curriculum in the level one. Um, in addition to different type, to, to go through different types of hedge fund strategies, you will also learn this liquid alternative, the liquid odd, and how the hedge fund industries has transformed their products and tried to um, penetrate into the mass market. Okay, so among all these different alternative assets, uh, whether they have, whether they will be successful in the coming years to increase their market share in the investment universe. I think it's all come down to this and whether they can provide these advantages yeah, or the, uh, the goodies for the investors. Some investors might be more preferred for diversification benefits and the others might be more preferred for the yield or the capital returns. Different types of AI yeah, might be um, more suitable for different investment purpose. Okay, so here I think this hedge fund is more suitable for diversifications. If you look for private equities, it's more suitable for the advanced performance. And in the curriculum, in the examination, that is what we are going to study. For each of this type of alternative investments, we have to understand what they are and how they can bring about these benefits to the investors. Okay, so as Joe just mentioned, basically is we have to know what are they, what functions can they perform? And that is the cross of the examinations. All right, so um, I think Joe has mentioned all this. Yeah, why do we want a Kaya um, uh, charter, these qualifications, and also all these different benefits that the, the Kaya societies can provide to you as a candidate or a, a member of the of the, of the associations. But before you can enjoy all this, yeah, of course, you have to become a member. You have to go through these uh, examinations and become a member. Uh, the membership growth has been quite, uh, I would say again, it is very spectacular, right? Um, by now it is well over 10,000. So to become a member, you have to pass two levels of examinations. Um, Joe has just mentioned that the level one is a uh, newly revised uh, curriculum, uh, which makes it is more focused on this um, uh, the bottom up approach, yeah, and make it more focused on each individual types of uh, alternative investments. And here you can see the weighting of each of these individual topics from the professional standards, fifteen to twenty five percent, and down to structured products. 10 to 14 percent. It is pretty well balanced. Um, or you might ask that among all these topics there's an introduction to AI. What, what is it? The introduction to AI well, basically is to prepare yourself to understand the features of different types of alternative investments. Like you have to have some statistics, um, uh, knowledge, um, now you have to go through um, some regressions, hypothesis testings, uh, probabilities, uh, what that kind of concept before you can appraise whether a fund 
a hedge fund, for example, whether it has done a good job or not. How do you appraise their performance? How do you appraise the risk that they have taken? So it all included in this uh, introductions to alternative investments. And in addition to this uh, statistical concept, uh, this also cover some derivatives. Derivatives, yeah, because as you know that, derivatives is also one of the characteristic of AI. Okay, in hedge funds, in structured products, they use a lot of derivatives and it will also be covered here. And that is the level two. Level two is the building up on, uh, on the knowledge in level one. And uh, they also have two new topics here. The first one is the current and integrated topics. Well, obviously, to qualify as a CHI members, we need to be very updated, very close to what is the latest development in the industries. Um, maybe lately, uh, quite a lot of uh, <clears throat> discussions in the markets are uh, related to this um, um, climate change, um, green investing, uh, ESG, or might be some others, um, very practical issues. How do we implement the portfolio constructions? Um, so all these kind of integrated current topics will be included there. And also, as Joe also mentioned, that after we have learned all these different types of AI knowledge products, how do we put them together? How do we use them to complement with the traditional investment? And that is one of the major focus in level two. Okay, uh, fees, Joe gone through this already, pass rate. Um, just one thing to, to add on here. Um, we don't know what is the, um, the passing score, the minimum passing score, right? Uh, for each level, level one or two. I, I think it has never, never been reviewed in the past. But one thing that we know is 70%. Um, if you got 70% in the examinations, yeah, you can be confident that you pass, okay? But that is not to say that if you got less than 70%, in the examinations means that you do not pass. It really depends on the other students, okay? The CAIA examination board will take into account of the average of the student performance during the exam cycle, yeah? So in a way that you are competing against each other, All right? Okay, then, <clears throat> Clapton. What we're trying to do here is um, it is a very demanding curriculum, uh, especially for level one, the coverage is very broad. And what we're trying to do here is to exped expedite your study. It is very uh, time demanding, I say, if you go through the whole curriculum all by yourself. And what we try to do is to expedite your study and help you to focus, to keep a well balanced uh, when you tackle the curriculum, yeah. And some, some of the topics are very attractive, very interesting, and people like to read on and on and on. But we try to keep a well balanced in our study plan. If you're really interested in certain topics, yes, you can do it. You can do further study, but after the exam, okay? So we help our students to be disciplined, have a well-disciplined plan, going through the whole curriculum with the focus on the requirements of the curriculum. And we believe by doing that should enhance your chance of success. Okay, uh, but anyway, the, the course is still quite intensive. We are going to meet, um, I think it's every Sunday, the whole days, yeah, uh, for consecutively five to six weeks to go through the whole curriculum. Um, then there will be a mock exam to, to make sure that you are well prepared before you go for the real one. Okay, here, the following slides, uh, I would like to just highlight to you um, some of the issues that I, I, um, I came across when I talked to the students before. As I said, our students uh, come from a very diverse background. Uh, some of them could be very experienced and some others uh, might, might be, they are totally new to the industries, okay? And uh, quite often, I, we are asked that uh, whether it is a very, quantitative uh, 
calculation healthy, uh, calculation heavy examination. But I, I would say that the uh, Kaya always stressed that, yes, there will be calculation type of questions, but apart from the calculation type of questions, there will be a lot of different types of questions on the concepts, uh, on the definitions, whether you know or you do not know um, those terms. Okay, so here I just want to share with you some of the slides and some of the requirements of the curriculum. Yeah, to have a flavor as to when we talk about the quantitative and the calculation requirement, um, to what extent it would be like. Here, um, chapter seven on measures of risk and performance. Uh, that is part of this, um, um, of the topics of introductions to alternative investments, okay? So in that topics, there will be some subjects like this, yeah, regarding the risk measurement. So here, if you look at the requirement of the curriculum, um, these are the keywords. We have to demonstrate knowledge on this subject, and we, we should be able to describe yeah, the methods of well, measuring or estimating these risk measures. And for this topic, the risk measure is VAR, value at risk. So here, the, the focus here is to demonstrate that you understand what it is and you'll be able to describe. To describe, you have to know how to apply this concept and also be aware of their limitations. And of course, you need to do a bit of calculations, the VAR calculations, yeah. But the calculation is not everything. Okay, coming to the concept of the VAR. So one way to estimate or to measure the VAR is, yeah, here we have assumptions. For those that you have a background in statistics, you should be very well aware of this uh, normal distribution, okay? For normal distribution assumptions, yeah, what we're trying to measure is, well, we can say is the maximum loss over a specified period. Uh, with, uh, what's that, level of confidence. And what it means is, if you have a portfolio, okay, your portfolio value is here, mean is the average, might be the portfolio is worth 10 million today. And the portfolio is investments, the investment value might go up as well as down. So when they go up to this direction, you make a gain so the investment value of the portfolio will be more than 10 million. But on the other hand, yeah, if the investments make loss, it will go into that direction. Okay, so what we're trying to do is to have an estimate of the maximum loss, how far it might go within a specified period and within a certain level of confidence, which means it's the probabilities. So we have to make some assumption on within how long? Are we talking about one day, one week, or one month? Yeah, with what probabilities, okay? So here, if we specify a confidence level of 95%, so we are saying that maybe within a month, with 95% level of confidence, that the loss cannot be more than that level. So that is the maximum loss, and that is the value at risk. Basically, that's what it is. Or maybe the other way to look at it is the minimum loss. Okay, so there are 95% that you won't lose more than that level, but to turn it the other way is there are 5% chance that you will lose at least that level. So it just depends on which way you look at it. Okay, so after you understand this concept, the value at risk, then you can do the calculations. Yeah, and this is just one approach, yeah, to estimate the VAR. As I said that you have to make some assumption. The assumption is this Z, well basically is a representation of the probabilities. Yeah, the level of the confidence that you require based on the time period, specify the time period. So with that equation, you can work out the VAR, and we call it parametric VAR because it is based on 
the standard deviation. All this calculation is based on the standard deviations. So with this equation, the calculation would be something like this. Here we have a fund, just like the previous example. If the starting value of the fund is 10 million, and we are given the daily standard deviation of 0.58%, okay? And if we make an assumptions, the probabilities that we are looking at um, is 95% confidence, or on the other hand, is 5% significance. So when we say 5% significance, that we are looking at the minimum loss. So 5% significance, if we look at the table, of course, during the class that we'll look at the table, but not now. So we get all this based on our assumption of the probabilities and the specified time period that we want to look at. Use the equation, then we can very, very straightforward. You can work out the figure here. The VAR is 302,000. That means in 10 days time, there's 5% chance that you might lose more than that. Okay, so it is one thing required in the curriculum, and that is one approach to work out these figures. Okay, there are other approaches as well, but then again, it's not all about calculation. I think it is more related to our understanding of the concepts. And to extend this concept a little bit, yeah, and well, as Joe said that, when we look at the alternative investment, sometimes one of the benefits that we are trying to get is the diversification. And therefore, when we work out this VAR, yeah, we have to look at whether this investment or this portfolio has any diversification benefit. When we talk about diversification benefits, yes, correlations, correlations always come into the pictures. So we have to get ready, yeah, be aware of um, the different correlation among different investment assets and how these different correlations will affect the total VAR. The total VAR is the VAR at the portfolio level, all right? So it is one thing that I want to highlight to you, uh, how these curriculum topics can involve both concept and also calculations. And just uh, one more thing, uh, very quick this one, I just want to, again, if we come to some quantitative, um, stuff right like options option is also part of this um introductions to ai topics but don't be afraid we are not going to do this option valuation which could be very quantitative but then again from the um curriculum yeah the requirement is we have to understand of course and then have to recognize all these different options characteristics different options means call put if you buy a call, you long a call. If you sell a put, you short a put. So with all these different transactions, what could be the characteristics? And the following slide, as you can see here, is a very basic slide, which tells you, for example, this one is, you buy a call, you long a call, and how would it be? And how, should, how, how, how would this transaction affect your profit and loss? And here, as you may be aware that, if you buy a call, if the underlying price goes up, which is here is the underlying asset, which could be a stock, a bonds, or a forex. If it goes up, then the call value goes up as well. If it comes down, yeah, you won't lose money because the call is not the same as the underlying. Yeah, you just pay the premium. All you lose will be just the premium. So that is what we have to understand, have to recognize what's the upside, what's the downside, what's the cost yeah, for this type of transactions. And similarly, you can short the call for put. You can short a put as well. So by combining these various types of transaction, long call, short put, you can have very different effects, which means something like this, okay? By combining different instruments, you have different impact on the upside, different impact on the downside, and you will incur different costs. So we have to be clear, yeah, as to what is the net position, the net impact, and is that what we want? 
Okay, uh, that is what the curriculum want us to understand. Okay, so further example, yeah, different options together. And lastly here is during the class, uh, you are usually after each topic, we'll have some discussion questions like this one. Okay, so this one might, might require a little bit more thinking after we go through the concept. Uh, like this options, if we have a long position on the commodities producers that, yeah, how can we do the hatching? Make use of options. Okay. So these are the way, the approach that we are going to conduct our intensive course on the kayak. Okay, so um, maybe here I just uh, circle the answer for you. So if you're interested, you might just uh, spend your own time to think about it. All right. Okay. So um, I just pass it back to my colleague first. And uh, if you have any other questions, you are welcome just uh, to type in and uh, we'll take it from there. Um, I know some of you may actually have questions to ask Larry or Joanne. Um, I will open the floor to every participant at the end of the seminar. So just wait for five or 10 minutes and then we will answer your questions. At the meantime, if you have anything you want to ask, you can just type it in our chat box and then uh, we will address those questions later on. Okay, so I just briefly introduced myself. I'm actually Yvette, I'm the marketing manager at Clapton. So um, just now you have uh, heard about Mary's introduction about our courses and also the demo lecture. So uh, just to let you know that our trainer Larry is actually a very experienced trainer and his rating is very high. So you see out of six, uh, he actually scored, scored uh, 5.75 in, in his evaluation. And Kaplan is also the first Hong Kong classroom course provider for Kaya. So, um, just to let you know more about Larry. And then for our classroom institution courses, for level one, uh, if you check your email these two days, uh, when I send across this uh, webinar invites to you all, I also attach our course brochure. So you can take a look about our course, uh, from our course brochure to know more about the course structure. Just a brief introduction that would be, for the first part, we have classroom um, tuition on every Sunday, so we have uh, we will start the course uh, in June and then finish it in August. And then in August, we will have a mock exam. It's a full mock exam, which means um, two hours for the first part and then another two hours for the other parts for you to really experience the four hour exam once before taking the actual one. So after the full mock exam, we also have a two hour mock exam review. So Larry will go over some difficult questions or some common mistakes that um, he Found it in the mock exam so that you can really fine tune your uh, study strategies at the end of the preparation time. Um, for the student service, we also have online catch up video. Because um, for our classroom tuition, it will be counted face to face. But then, in case there are uh, situation like for the virus or social movement, that sometimes, or even you got some OT or, or other things that you cannot attend the classes, we will have unlimited online catch up videos for you. So you can watch that at home anytime as long as you got internet access. Um, we always recommend students to take the course as early as possible and enroll it as early as possible because it definitely takes you lots of time to prepare for the exam and it's always better to prepare earlier. So if you enroll it this, two, this few days, you can enjoy the early bird discount. Um, what's more is, as I mentioned, the course actually starts in June, but then it's now only May. So you still have more than one month's time before the actual cast started. So if you enroll it this week, you can actually get our wiser material before that. So you can take a look at the books, at the notes, and then you will get a sense of the syllabus and everything before attending the classes. So that would be the most time um, saving uh, strategies for you. And we also have different special offers. So uh, for example, for loyalty prices, that is for Clapton's uh, student who already took our 
courses before. And then for generic students, that which means you are not visitor and you didn't uh, take any of our courses, you can enjoy the early bird discounts. So one of my hints for you to win that e-book five minutes afterwards, just please take a look at the early bird deadline, okay? Give you three seconds for that. Okay. Um, apart from early bird deadline, we also have limited offers. For example, the win-win referral, which means uh, if you got another friend who used to study at Clapton or who will study at Clapton, um, you can actually use the referral to ask him or her to join the course, and then you both can get 500 discount. Um, but of course, there are terms and conditions apart, but then for that, uh, you can refer to our website later on, or in case you are interested in this offer, you can just anytime email or WhatsApp us. Another offer would be if you like our Facebook page, you can also enjoy a $50 discount. So just now what we mentioned about the classroom to teaching is for level one students. For level two students, you can actually consider the Swiser package. So we have two types of package for you to consider. The first one about the essential pass package is more about a self-directed package, which means you read the material, you study the um, the questions you do the exercise on your own pace. The other one on the right hand side about premium pass, that would be you got everything included in essential pass package. But then what's more is you get the live online weekly classes. So that would be a um, monitored uh, strategies for you so that you can keep your revision every week with the guidance of our trainers. So that would be for level two students. For level one students, we always recommend you to take the classroom face to face because it's always good to see your tutor and then you can ask questions anytime in the class. And for this WhatsApp package, just a quick note is that uh, when you buy our package, you can choose to get the print or the online version, or you can get uh, both of the version if you just add 500 more. And then now, uh, I know that we have a questions early on. It's more about the pilot program for CFA charter holder. So let me read that out, it's from Samuel. Can you share more about the pilot program for CFA charter holder? Does that mean enrolling Kaya level two exam as long as I'm a CFA charter holder or I have to go for application and subject to approval? So, um, Joanne, would you mind answering a bit about that? Uh, yeah, can you, can you hear me? Yeah, I think... Great, okay, that's great. Th just double checking, thanks, Yvette, that's great. And, uh, and Samuel, thanks for the question. I did, I did just kind of privately message you back. So, um, for anyone on the phone who is a Kaya charter holder, you do need to, to get approval once you've enrolled, but basically you are eligible to go straight to level two if you are a CAIA, a CFA charter holder. So you make your application and then we approve your application and then you're able to go straight to level two. Um, and there's a URL link, which is www.kaya.org forward slash stackable hyphen pilot. And Yvette, I'll send the link if you'd be kind to share that um, with the participants post tonight's call. I'm happy to share that with a bit more information. Yeah, sure. I'll just uh, share the information that you have for email to them all. Thank you. Um, hi, there. It's Joe again. Um, if there's no more questions, should we perhaps allow our participants to get on with the with the rest of the the the, the personal plans, or is there anything I should like us to ad ad address? Sorry, I didn't see any questions right there. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. So should we just end the session then and be respectful? And so should we just provide a quick summary? So um, for, the, for those um, on the phone still, thank you for holding back and thank you for taking the time to listen to, to obviously Yvette and, and Larry, my own um, input this evening. Really appreciate the opportunity to share I think the world and, and all things are changing. So if you're looking at your, your qualifications and wanting to get a little bit more familiar with us, let us know how we can help. But I think um, Larry did a great job walking through things relating to knowledge. And um, I hope my information on the car exam has been helpful as well. So um, to Yvette and Larry, thank you very much. And indeed to our participants this evening, congratulations to the winners on the eBooks. And uh, I look forward to seeing you take on the candidate challenge and becoming a Kai member ahead. So thank you very much indeed.
And thank you, Joanne, and I uh, hope every one of you got a good night rest today. Um, so uh, I just got all the information for the winners, and then so thank you, everyone, and enjoy the night. That's great. Thank you. Bye-bye.